it's harder to play like mid lane against uh, Rogue, for example, than it is against like uh, Fnatic or G2 or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but, no, but that's not because they are worse, it's just the, the way they play, for example. Another game lost. Do you need help concentrating while CSing or just playing the game? I think I got something for you. Brain effect focus. I lost again, man. Dude, I told you it helps you, but it's not a magic potion to get you out of silver. You still need to work on your positioning. And start playing Annie, man. Hello everyone, this is Serious from the Shot Caller, joined once again by Nukeduck after another uh, pretty dominant win against Vitality, I would say, pretty confident after that game. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, we, we came in like, with a strategy and it, 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 it worked for the most part, so yeah, it was... Uh, <laughs> for, for, for the most part, what went yeah. wrong then? I uh, Maybe my lane face in mid, like, uh, uh, like I was I fall quite behind, but I mean, Camille is of course not strong, only one in lane face mid, but... I think the, they played kind of bad in the, or like their jungle was like playing like kind of too aggressive. So I think with, with the, if we would play like really properly or like really well, then uh, we would be able to just like kind of strangle hold the game uh, up on, uh, from uh, like from like six minutes up until when we were like really online with our comp, uh, and they wouldn't be able to get leads in any lanes or anything like that. Uh, but how we played it, we kind of like we, we, we just we threw a bit, I think. So uh, they actually managed to have a lead. I, I didn't see the goal lead, but uh, they, I think they had a small lead. And at that point, uh, our comp is kind of OP still, so we're probably still going to win, but, uh, but it makes it like harder. So. Yeah, it takes a bit, a little bit more time. Now, was the yeah. mid Camille pick based on the uh, LCK pick, or did you have it planned beforehand? Uh, no, it's, uh, well, it's, uh, yeah, it's based on the LCK pick. I, I didn't have it planned beforehand. Uh, they, I, started, I didn't play much with it uh, already, like maybe, uh, maybe three scrims or something. Uh, but it, it feels good with Sejuani and, and uh, Tarik, or like, we, we, no, we didn't have Tarik, they had Tarik, but, but it, 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 with Sejuani it feels good, because, you know, my bottom is playing soon now, so we need some physical, yep. like a jar on top is not going to, you know, provide enough physical damage, so, and then, you know, like, uh, a lot of champs are out, I don't remember what they banned, but second phase, I'm sure they banned, like, uh, uh, like physical damage champions, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember, but I'm sure, like, Irelia, Artrox, all the normal stuff is, like, out, you know? Uh, so like we just have to fall back and at that point it becomes like what do you play mid like you play Camille, do you, they took the Jace right? So then you have to maybe play set but blind is extremely, extremely flippy you know and they have Severe and Tarik as well. So it's just uh, you need something physical uh, that's preferably melee so it's, it's Camille yeah. So what do you make of Silas mid right now? Now that he even got buffed even more after MSI when he was already at MSI regarded as like he the... Got buffed? Yeah, right after. Like pretty much on the uh, on the patch right after, uh, for some reason. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, they like uh, wait. Was that the like the hot fix where they reverted like the W change or something? No way. I, I, to be honest, I, like that, that's a while ago, so I don't remember that. But <laughs> yes, but Silas is very strong. Yes, uh, we ended up banning him. Yeah, he he is super strong. I mean, uh, yeah, he, he's uh, yeah, he definitely overpowered champion. So I mean, uh, though like it's 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 a high skill also, so you have to play well. But uh, if you play well, he's he's overpowered. Yeah. What do you think is like the, the most important to ban in that case? Is it Silas or is it Yumi at the moment? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I, I don't know. Like Yumi is like super annoying, you know? So like even if whatever is most appeal, like Yumi is just like... In Soro I would always ban Yumi, let's say like that. Always ban Yumi? Yes, yes, definitely. It's totally annoying. Were you irritated to see her buffed as well after, you know, she got released and a lot of people were like, oh, she's trash, and then some were like, no, she's actually really broken. And then people figured out how to play her, and then she gets buffed even more? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, they, they usually tend to do that with all new champs. I, 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 I mean, like, I have conspiracy theories, they do it to, like, sell skins or the champion or whatever. I mean, at this point, I think that should be obvious, because every new champion is so overpowered. Uh, every rework champion is overpowered, every yeah. new champ is overpowered, without a fail. So, at this point, I, I'm sure they're doing it on purpose, so that's a bit annoying, but, uh, but that's the game, yeah. yeah. So, it's even to the point where, uh, when there is coming a rework or a new champion, uh, all the pro teams know that, this, that it will be OP, you know? So, you're already waiting to play it because you don't even know what the skills are, you just know, like, new champ, it will be overpowered. So, we have to play it instantly. So it's, uh, I mean, so it's fair for, it's, everyone can play it, so it's fair for everyone, but yeah, that's just how it goes.
So how do you decide, like, for for example, a champion that could be a flex pick, right, could be top or mid, mm -hmm. uh, how do you decide um, where to put him when, you know, the, the, the members of the team want to grind out the games on, uh, on him, of course? Uh, oh, you mean, like, yeah, so, like, who, who, who takes, like, yeah. who, who, who plays the new champion, yeah. you mean? Uh, yeah, I, I think it just depends who, who takes the initiative. Uh, also, obviously, some champions are, like, obviously designed for some roles and, like, some... Yeah, uh, I mean, not, uh, not talking about Yumi, but you know, Silas was considered a top laner and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, he was even jungler, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, I think you just like spam it out and see how you feel and then like... Because obviously, for example, Silas is really high uh, skill cap, right? So, for example, if you... Any role could play Silas, uh, but it will just be like how confident you are with Silas. So if, if, let's say, your top laner is really good with Silas, he will probably come to the conclusion that he can play Silas against like anything, you know? Like, just give me Silas, you know? And then that, that's just how, like, naturally how it's going to go, probably. And then the other guys that are not as confident on it, they won't practice it. And then like one guy will probably be like better on size. But normally, or like the best way is that everyone can play it perfectly. But uh, it's like so many champs that are kind of difficult to play nowadays that that's, that's kind of like a perfect world scenario that that's normally not the case. Yeah. Right. Now, Origin. Yeah. Two esports. Um, Origin, you uh, you guys made second play place in regular split. You managed to get second place in playoffs. You manifested yourself as the second best team in Europe last split, definitely. Right. Now, G2 comes back from MSI, wins MSI, yeah. is considered one at least one of the best teams in the world. You know, you know LEC yeah, yeah. people are like, hey, we're the best league in the world now. So all of a sudden, you guys get upgraded to being the second best team in the world, or yeah. like in the second yeah. best league at least. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I don't, uh, well, uh, like that's not exactly how we <laughs> think, you know. Uh, I think it's uh, all the same. I think SKT versus G2 was obviously super close. Yeah. IG, like, they were like really tilted. Like, I could see the games that IG played against Team Liquid that they were really out of it mentally. They just like threw games like super hard, like in super dumb ways. So it like, it, I could see in their play that they were like tilted. They, they play like me when I'm really tilted. <laughs> like, so like I, I could see that, you know? Uh, so for example, I, I don't think EU is necessarily the best region. Yeah. Uh, like I don't think China is like the worst in NA, for example. I mean, they are definitely not. Uh, and uh, so for us, it's, it doesn't change much. It's most like, uh, yeah. Right, but what I was <laughs> trying to get at is um, obviously, uh, is that still the goal to just like manifest yourself um, as definitely the second place, or are you still aiming for the top, even though G2 comes oh. home as the MSI winner? No, I mean, uh, it's, quite, it's tough to beat G2. Uh, obviously, they play like extremely well today as well. Uh, the rumors say they only have a few days of practice as well going into this. I can uh, confirm that. Yeah, yeah, and that, that would make sense also, but. Um, I mean, it's a similar patch to MSI anyway, but uh, yeah, we will try to beat them, uh, even though we will know it will be hard. That's always all we're going to try to do. We're going to try to, to win uh, win the split. I mean, already that was already like my goal uh, last split. And uh, yeah, we, we will try again against you 2 And at least we won, uh, like we got kind of stumped last uh, playoffs, you know, like both times. So we want to we avoid that happening. But also uh, we want to go to Worlds. So uh, for example, a second place finish again would guarantee us that. And then, uh, if you do like if you manage to do something well at worlds then that could be even be more important or whatever so uh, i mean we're just going to try to do our best and do everything yeah right and on the screen there we have rogue playing against misfits right now yeah. that are Ah, oh, it's pretty even right now still. I got to speak with Larson a couple of days back. Yeah. Uh, of course, a lot of people are very hyped about him coming into the league, and he was like also um, really, really excited, you know, really excited to play Caps, but also had high praise for you personally. Um, are you excited to play him? Uh, yeah, uh, I, like I play a bit against him, uh, like, uh, like their team, uh, I practice against them a bit, and he plays well. Uh, their style is like super aggressive, super like... Uh, they, they, they like to camp mid pretty hard uh, <laughs> to get Larsen ahead so he can carry. Uh, so that's like, uh, it's, it's difficult to play against definitely. For example, it's, it's harder to play like mid lane against uh, Rogue, for example, than it is against like uh, Fnatic or G2 or something. Uh, be, no, but that's not because they are worse, it's just the, the way they play. For example. But I, I think, you know, G2 and Fnatic will beat Rogue, you know, it's just that that's just their place that is to pressure mid really hard, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it makes it more difficult for you. Yeah, yeah, but normally it's easier to win the game, let's say, because they, I feel like they're very linear and, and, and I don't sure they can always transition it and whatever, but uh, they, uh, but yeah, it's hard to play against him and Larsen plays well. His team has like really much trust in him because they, they like try to try to get him ahead. Yeah. Excited, excited. Should we place Rogue as a playoffs team or what do you think? Uh, well, it's a bit too uh, close to say, or like, not too close to say, that's not too early. too early to say, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, so, I, I, there is a lot of teams that should, 
should or could be in playoffs. So I think uh, it's 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 got to be an improvement, right? Uh, but uh, I think that's a bit early to say. I mean, yeah. that bar is also pretty low yeah, at 216 yeah, when you yeah. start there, you know. Exactly. Like that, that can I say uh, almost for sure, yeah. <laughs> that I can say almost for sure as well. Yeah. Anything you would like to say to the Origin fans? Uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah, we were back here and we were going to try to go in further this time. So thanks for cheering for us. Very excited for that. And a hashtag for the people that watch until the end. Uh, hashtag, uh, yeah, I don't really know. To be honest. Hashtag we are you since it's yes. in the background. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Make sure to follow Nuke Duck on Twitter. This was Darius from the Shot Caller. I hope you guys enjoy our LEC coverage. See you guys next time. Bye bye. We'd especially like to thank Christoph Buinovic, Thomas Göttel, Etienne, Erich Althaus, Lukas Legal, Lazy Raven, Lama Vyuta, and Adam Novosviat for your very special support. And of course, also all the people whose names you see scrolling past you. Without you guys, we would have closed down probably a while ago. So thank you so much for your help. Thank you.